here we are back again doing some more app reviews. You guys liked it so much when I did those, uh, when I took in all your apps, I looked at them, I reviewed some of them that I decided to, I'm going to try and make this a more regular thing. So I have here another app in front of me that I'm going to take a look at. We're going to test the back stack. We're going to test the navigation. We are going to test to see if it survives process death. And we're going to, of course, test configuration changes. And there's much, much more than I want to show you with this app. I picked it for a reason. Obviously, I actually really like this app. It's a great idea. It's very well developed. Uh, you know, it's actually incredibly well developed. It's very, very, it's very refined, as you'll see when we go through this. And it's also a really good idea. Uh, it has great content, great animations. It's good. We're going to take a look at it, though. So this app is called Programming Hero, and it says coding just got fun, and it's in beta. So this app, before we open it, I want to tell you a little bit about it. I just, I've been talking to the developer on Instagram. That's how I actually got in contact with him. Um, he's on a team. It's a small team of six people. They work in the U.S. They're based out of the U.S. They, they um, let's take a look at the downloads here before I move forward. So we have 100,000 downloads. We have almost 10,000 reviews, and there it's a 4.9 rating. So this thing is great. Like it's got a lot of downloads. It's very highly rated. Everything is looking good, and it's only in beta. They've only been out for uh, for about a year. So anyway, let's let's open it up. Opening up the app, programming here right away. I love the splash screen. I love the colors. Everything is really good. Like the first impressions of this app is this thing looks like it's well built. It looks like it's well designed. You know, scroll everything from like that little shiny thing down on the galaxy uh, floating action button, how it goes over. The scrolling is nice. Everything is nice. Everything just looks good right off the bat. So the it has kind of um, it has one sort of main concept, which is obviously teaching programming and it teaches it. It tries to teach it in a fun way. Then down below, you also have a forum. So like if I was to log in, there's a forum here where I can like chat with people, ask questions. Um, you can also see like announcements up here. I, lo I love this feature, by the way, how there's a form just just on a on a tangent here, um, how you can post, how, how you can look at announcements. You can see your own posts. Um, you got to sign in to see your posts, but this is cool. The, this idea of having like an internal forum in the app itself. I really like that, especially for announcements. So if the, every, anything new comes out, uh, you can uh, quickly see that with the announcements. So the next thing I want to talk about is the, uh, how this app works. So let's, let's actually go through one of these. I'm going to click on one of these planets here. So uh, this is in kind of the basic concepts galaxy. So down below, you see that I have that, uh, that floating action button. If I scroll down to the bottom, if I click galaxies, there's all these different concepts. So there's basic concepts, fundamentals, code playground, problem solving, data structures, blah, 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 a whole bunch of different stuff. So these are different galaxies. We're, we're going into the basic concepts galaxy. And I've already done the introduction, so let's go to... Uh, let's go to output here. So it says when you use a software slash website slash app, you expect it to do something and show you some output. To display the output, you need to use a special keyword print. So um, right off the right now, actually, I want to stop and say that uh, I want to point out something that I don't like about the app. So there's a lot that I as I go through this, I'm going to point out the things that that I don't like. Um, right away, I don't know what language I'm programming in. That that's that has not been mentioned at all. So I, I logged in and I've used this app pretty not extensively, but I've used it quite a bit. And nowhere in any of these challenges do I ever see them mention the language. It's Python. I know it's Python because I've been through them and I know Python. And so when I see it, I know it. But um, as a beginner, I don't know. I, I You need to tell them what language they're learning. I think that's really important. So that's something that could change. So um, it says down here, there's a little try it button that I can click and it opens up a compiler. So this is probably the coolest thing about the app from like a developer's perspective, me as a developer. This actually, it has a Python compiler inside the app. I think that's really cool. I asked the guy how he did that and they said they used the native uh, development toolkit for Android. So apparently, I didn't even know you could do this. Apparently you can um, have like, you can build like functions with Kotlin or Java that get sent to like a Python compiler or a C compiler, whatever language compiler. I don't know if all languages are supported, but Python is definitely supported. C is supported, C++ is supported. Um, so you can write, functions and methods in those languages and get get code back so it's really cool essentially you're building an app with kotlin or java this is this is built with java originally i asked the developer and you can create functions with python i thought that was really cool so anyway let's click the play button here and it gives you an output there's the output it says emma watson which is what we expect it's just a string that's being printed so pretty cool so let's go to one of the more difficult challenges let's click the x up here 
go back. Let's go down to a different galaxy. We're going to go into the data structures galaxy because data structures and algorithms are kind of a notoriously difficult uh, topic in programming. So you can see that I've already kind of started here. Um, if I click on data structures up here, it gives an analogy here. It says, if you go into any uh, big city, you might not see fancy people, but you will see tall buildings. When you go inside a building, you will see different people living on different floors. However, from the outside, each floor of the building has a similar look. This means that each floor has a similar structure. So he's trying to, trying to uh, paint a picture, uh, give you an analogy of what data structures uh, are all about. So now forget about the cities and buildings. Think about the last time you and your friends broke a strict rule at school. Ooh. <laughs> uh, you were kicked out. And this is how I know that this guy is like fresh out of school or this, this team is fresh out of school. They're using, or maybe not necessarily. I'm guessing. Okay, I'm guessing. You were kicked out from school. Next. Notice you can vividly remember the notice board when someone was kicked out of school. You have their ID, their name, and then their notice, and it says they're expelled. So now, now they're trying to draw an analogy from the notice board. So they're saying that this is a data structure. So they're saying that every row slash line in the notice board has a similar structure, a similar look. However, each row has a different data, has different data. So a different name, a different student ID, etc. Now you know this notice has data in a structured way. So it's just it's trying to like paint a picture for you hope letting it's letting you think for yourself too. notice it's not like just straight up saying this is a data structure it has an id field a name field a notice field instead it's kind of it's making you think which which i like uh, the next and said you put data in a structured way is called a data structure a data structure helps you store manipulate and use data in an efficient way so uh, let's we don't need to answer the question so that's cool like the first lesson is not like there's no game or anything like that it's just strictly kind of trying to explain it to you now let's click on list structure here so a, a data structure has three properties store more than one data special structure to store data specific rule to add or remove data so if i go next it says uh it gives us an example so it says creates a list of heroes rat man cat man and mosquito man and then it asks to print that so we can click on try it and go to the compiler click run and we can see that output. So this again is really cool. I love this compiler thing. Uh, I, I feel like they need like a little Python notification up in the top corner, a little Python icon up in the top corner or something so that you know that this is Python. But either way, I, I, I don't, I didn't even know you could do this. I think this is like incredible that they've built this app that has a compiler built into it. Very, very cool. Uh, so anyway, that's this is this is kind of how they do it. And then once in a while, you get a game. So this, if I go up to the top and I click the introduction, I think there was a game. Yeah, so there it gives you a game to play. So it's trying to keep it fun. It's trying to keep it interesting. It makes you think. I'm gonna try and throw this basketball into the hoop. I don't know what this has to do with data structures, but you know, I'm gonna throw the basketball into the hoop. It's kind of fun. It's actually surprisingly hard. Like. I'm nailing them right now, but only because I've tried this before. It's it's actually pretty easy to miss. So that one should probably, yeah, that one missed. So anyway, a cool, cool little feature. So now let's talk about um, back navigation. So I've been playing around with this app for quite a bit and I haven't found a single issue with back navigation. So like if I click in here, um, if I press the back button, you know, it would actually be cool. One thing to add, like if I'm clicking next, next, if I click the back button, it would be cool to go back to the next page as opposed to just getting out of that lesson completely. So that's actually, that's not necessarily a bug. It's just like, I think that that would might, might be better. Um, if I click anywhere in this app and I do anything and I press the back navigation, everything works good. I don't, I don't really have anything that I've seen so far that, that caused an issue. So right away, I'm going to say back navigation, great job. Uh, next, let's go or let's talk about let's talk about configuration changes. So this is another one that was done really well. So if I click in here, um, make note of the progress. So the rocket at the very top, the progress. Now I'm going to flip the screen and notice that the the progress is the same. So basically everything is kept the way it was. Um, they're probably they could they might be using view models they might not if it were me I would definitely be using a view model here I would keep like a progress tracker for the rocket or whatever and everything would be beautiful um, likewise if I open up the compiler and I rotate everything is the same I don't get like strangely navigated back or anything like that um, basically configuration changes seem to be good even if I like I, a very common one a common issue that uh, people miss when they're developing apps is like they'll have some kind of a dialogue pop up or like a question oops oh I have to sign in to ask a question maybe what about give us feedback okay so suppose they have a dialogue up here for giving some feedback 
usually if you rotate this or a very common thing if you rotate this the dialog will close and that's obviously not what you want but this maintains it perfectly so that's a very common thing that people miss and these guys seem to have handled it so so far um, I, I know I didn't test a lot with you on camera here but I've, I've done a lot of testing off camera and so far configuration changes are good backstack is good so far this app looks great so now let's talk about uh, process death so I'm gonna click into one of these lessons here, and now I'm going to trigger process death. So I'm gonna send the app to the background. I'm going to open up my command prompt. Uh, we're gonna search uh, for the process just so you could see it. Uh, so PS, oh, I need to do ADB shell. So I'm going into ADB, I'm gonna do PS dash A. So find the processes, find all the processes and grep, and I'm gonna get the package uh, for that app. So let me just open up the Google Play Store. I'm gonna copy the package up here and I'm going to paste it. So process, list the processes, list all the processes and find the one with the package, uh, com learn programming code camp. So there we go, we have the process, it's running. Now I'm gonna do am kill the process. Remember my app is in the background currently, so it's not in view. Uh, so I'm gonna kill that process. Now I'm going to search for the process again. Notice there's nothing. Now I'm going to relaunch that app. So going over, oh, where did it get installed? Right there. So now I'm gonna relaunch the app. It's gonna launch in a new process and it does fail the process, te process death test. Not very many uh, apps pass this test and it's because I don't think it's a very well-known thing. You know, like, you know, a month ago, I didn't even know about process death and now I'm teaching about it. So don't feel bad that you failed the process death test almost all apps do and really quick just for those of you who don't know about process death i have a video on it so that's probably the best way to get more information let me just bring that up for you so if you just go to my youtube channel click on videos and go to uh, testing how to test any app for process death that's a video that you want to watch and that that tells you everything you need to know about process death and how to test for it basically what it is is the android system uh, when you start an app it starts in a new linux process and if if that process dies usually it's because uh, the app was under like low memory conditions like if you have a whole bunch of stuff open you're doing a bunch of stuff sometimes the system will just start killing apps to free up memory so that's what you would call process death so the thing that i just did there where I killed the process manually with ADB, that's like simulating process death. And what we expected to happen was we wanted the app to relaunch in the same state that it was in when I sent it to the background, which it didn't. It actually relaunched completely, it looks like. So that's gonna be it for this video. I highly encourage you to check out this app. I think it's really well built, it's very refined. There's a great group of developers who are working on this because overall, other than the, pro I mean, the process death thing failed, but so what? They, it's very, it's very rare that an app will die because of low memory conditions. Uh, you know, at least with modern phones, like the probably the most common one is like the app gets sent to the background for like a long time, like 30 minutes, and then the system just kills the process because it's not doing anything. But anyway, that's going to be the end of this video. Hopefully you enjoyed this review. Hopefully you liked the app. I really liked the app. I encourage you to check it out. Again, it's called Programming Hero. Coding just got fun and it's in beta. Go, go give this a download, try it out, leave them a review and let them know what you think. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.